Art tips from Samantha. What's up, guys? Welcome back to TikTok Art Tips Part. Forgot what number we're on, but I'm just here to make sure TikTok is good for the art babies out there. Well, here we go again. Art tips for improving. Let's go. Any artists having trouble placing their eyes, this is the bit for you. Take your drawing and cover a half of the face. Spend about five seconds to imagine where the other eye would be. Now, if you uncover the face and the eye isn't where you imagined it, it's probably in the wrong spot. Dude! Oh my goodness, I love that. I always tell you guys, you know, when, when the eyes don't look right, just cover up one of the eyes, try to imagine where it is, and then take your hand off and see the monstrosity that you've created. It's so good. I wonder if you stole that from my videos. Totally fine though, but if you did, uh... Um... That was fantastic. But that's my art tip, so one out of ten for you. <clears throat> How to become a better artist in 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Listen to me, young child. It takes years. Many, many years. Of grueling training, dedication, practice, and meditation. It's an art form that cannot be perfected in 30 seconds. <clears throat> Anyways. Number one, draw 100 empty square boxes and don't make them too big. Number two, fill every single one of those boxes with a piece of artwork, a drawing, a painting, in your unique art style. Number three, draw things you've never drawn before. Number four, don't worry about it being absolutely perfect and don't worry about creating a masterpiece in every single box. Number five, just focus on filling every single box with a unique piece of art. Um, yeah, no, I, I get the point, okay? I get the point here. I think the point here is to uh, repeat a lot of repetition, right? not being a perfectionist about the things that you are practicing. But one thing I would add to this video is maybe don't do it from imagination all the time. Maybe use references for some of them because then you can study what's in real life and add that to your mental library. All right, how to find your art style. People always ask me this and I've had enough. So this person right here is going to tell you guys how to find your art style. Let's see how it goes. Number one, it's going to take time. Don't force it. Be patient with your progress. Two, look up artists that draw in the art style you are aiming for. Take note of the things that make you like their art style, like how they draw the eye, how they do the line art, or how they do the color and shading. Try to incorporate those things into your art. I am not telling you to copy their art style, but rather use them as inspiration for Three, practice, practice, practice. To be more consistent with your art style, you have to keep practicing. Oh, I love this video. So good. Be a little bit better if you didn't use a robot voice and have that goofy guy singing in the background, but I agree with every single point here. Number one is take your time, uh, be patient, and don't force it. I see so many little wee babies out there who are like, I'm gonna find my art style, so I'm just gonna just gonna go ham with all the stylization and stuff. And they do this before learning all the basics, before being comfortable with shapes and anatomy, all that stuff. And people jump the gun and try to do too much. Guys, be patient, it's gonna take time. And art style is something that's gonna change over time for you. It's never gonna be something that's set in stone. You can't just be like, I'm gonna find my art style and boom, here's my art style. This is how I'm gonna draw for the rest of my life. That's just not gonna happen. You're gonna keep growing and keep developing as an artist. Look up artists that draw in the art style you are aiming for. This point here is fantastic because if you like a specific artist style or an art style in general, you can look for the things that the artists do within those paintings and see what you could implement into your work. I am not telling you to copy their art style. Combine it with your own personal touch. That's how you find an art style. This is a pencil holder neck extender. You can put your tiniest squat into the end and use them like normal. 10 tenths would recommend. Oh, I think I've heard of this before, actually. Well, I'm not really a traditional artist, so I don't really burn through pencils like that. But for those of you guys who are traditional artists, pencil holders are definitely a thing. Because you know when you when you wear your pencil down and it's just like, it's like a tiny little nib and you can't really hold it correctly, especially in traditional sketching, being able to hold your pencil very confidently in different positions, it's super important to the quality of your work. You know what they say, it's not about the size of the boat, it's about the motion of the ocean, but sometimes the motion of the ocean just isn't there when the size of the boat is way too small. I'm sorry, fellas, that's just how it is. Things I wish I knew before becoming a digital artist. Oh boy, there are so many things that I wish I knew. That this thing, if it looks like that, you don't have to buy a replacement for it. It's hidden at the end of your pen. <laughs> 
You didn't know that. You didn't know that? You didn't know that? Did you happen to read the manual that came with your tablet? I guess not everybody reads, but for those of you guys who have a Wacom drawing tablet, you see this little pen holder that they give you? Uh, if you just twist this thing, look at all of these spare nibs. So don't go out there and start buying a bunch of spare nibs because they give you some, okay? Don't be stupid. Useful resources for artists. Resources for artists. First, we have Magic Poser. This app allows you to choose a 3D model and pose it however you want. You can choose which model you want to use. There are some pre-made poses. You can also move each body parts as you want. You can even change the lighting and move it. You can download objects, hair or clothes and add them to your scene. It's very useful when you can't find a reference of the angle you need, and it's free to use. You can pay for more variety of models or objects, but you don't have to. Oh my god. Okay, so this app is called Magic Poser. And it's in French here. Vous n'avez pas de I might actually look into this because I think this is really cool. You know that pain of just trying to hunt for a reference and you can't find the right pose for the life of you? I feel like this would be super useful. Honestly, guys, I'm a little bit smooth brained. I don't know why I haven't thought about this earlier, but <laughs> 10 out of 10. Thank you for shedding light on this cute little app here. I accidentally painted the eye too high. Here's how I fix it. You know how we digital artists fix an eye that we painted too high? Shift Command X. <laughs> Get wrecked. Want to be a character designer? I want to be a character designer. Please show me how. Well, here's what to include in your portfolio. Number one is character turnarounds. They're a great reference for how a character should look in a 3D space or animated. Two is expression sheets. They're helpful for seeing your character's emotional range. Three is walk cycles, especially animated ones. They can show a lot about your character's personality and their confidence. Some other things you can include are your art process, sketches, silhouettes, and character lineups. Now, I personally don't have a portfolio. I don't have a need for a portfolio because I do all this goofy stuff for a living. But I guess if you guys are looking for a job or you're looking to get into university, these are some pretty solid tips for your portfolio. I remember when I applied to this really good animation program, uh, we needed a character turnaround and we needed expression sheets for that character. We didn't need a walk cycle, but we also needed to do storyboards and we also needed to do an indoor environment piece in perspective, but that's for animation. It was a really good program. I got in and I was in there for like a couple months and I was like, you know what? I don't really vibe with this. So I left. And so I dropped out of that and went into graphic design and then I decided this is not for me. So I'm gonna start doing art full time. And now I'm rambling like a grandpa. So let's move on to the next video. But that was very good. Eight out of 10, great job. Three mistakes I made in my first stages as an artist and entrepreneur. This guy said slash entrepreneur. So I'm a little bit on edge now because he sounds like a business major and you can't trust the business majors. Mistake number one, not having enough presentations to send your clients. You need to have a professional website. You should have a PDF document that outlines either your portfolio, your packages, your process, your pricing, or all four of the above. Mistake number two, trying to do too many things at once, not specializing and becoming a master at one thing. When you become a master at whatever you're doing or selling, you're able to deliver the best results. And lastly, trying to do everything on my own. You need to leverage connections outside of yourself, whether it's on social media, by meeting friends within your niche, by meeting a mentor, or by finding some sort of guidance. You'll learn much faster from learning from other mistakes instead of having to make mistakes yourself and correct them. Okay, so I was right. This guy is a business major. <laughs> But I gotta say, these are very solid tips. The way you present yourself, the way you present your work matters when you are an independent artist. If you wanna do big things, you gotta present yourself in a relatively professional way, which is something I don't really do, you know? I'm a goofy guy. And the second tip is to focus on one thing and become a master at it. Now, that's something I can respect, and it does make sense. You know how there are people in the industry that just specialize in like robots or people who specialize in animals. And when these companies are looking for artists for a specific project, they're like, hey, let's get that guy because he's the robot guy and we need some robots. So very good tips, but one out of 10 for being a business major. Don't be friends with business majors. Do not get into relationships with business majors and do not do business with business majors. This has been a PSA from Sam Desserts. <laughs> What did you figure out? Color in grayscale and then use the clipping mask with the overlay filter. That's basically how you go from grayscale to color. Um, look, I'm, I'm, look I'm, very, I'm very glad you figured it out, but you did not have to traumatize the entire world by sharing that sound. And rarely do they ever ask to see my work. Then some might have a pleasure to lay eyes on you. Excuse me, why would you? Why, this sentence could have ended at look at my work. Manners. 
Let's be civilized, guys. You Americans down south, you guys. Oh, little Americans. My three-step approach to improving art fast. Yes. 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 Okay. Wow, TikTok is on a roll today. I really like these tips. Number one, find references, use references, and make sure you're learning from real life. Number two, find artists that you like who are painting the same subjects. And number three, incorporate the things that they do well into your work and it's just boom, now you're an art god. 10 out of 10, have my like. Can't find a layer. Open your actions, then press. Click gesture controls. Then layer select and make sure the first option is on. Tap on the problem area. It should select the layer. Oh wow, that's actually really smart. So for those of you who draw using hundreds and hundreds of layers, that's a really good tip. I mean, either this or you can start facing your fears and use less layers. I don't see why you need a hundred layers for a painting. Come on guys, come, come on, come on. Get it together, Get, collect yourself, gather yourself. Repeat after me, 10 layers is all I need. 10 layers is all I need. 10 layers is all I need. Get it together, get it, get it. Oh, tips from some ah! This individual, uh, I've seen so many videos. Uh, the, the intros, man. I'm struggling with the bottom leg. I don't have a reference. I'm having trouble with proportion. And this is because I'm drawing the limb out of context. I zoom out, get the whole figure, and there we go. The side of the head is in reference to the shoulders, which is in reference to the body, which is in reference to the leg. It's all one piece. You gotta work the entire thing. Okay, you know what? Once you get through the intro, that's a really solid tip. Don't work for too long in a small area of a painting without looking at it in the context of the painting. Because when you finish that painting, people are gonna look at that painting in its entire context. Nobody's gonna just zoom in and focus on one small thing. So it's your responsibility to make sure that everything works together. Zoom out, zoom out, calm down, get it together, stop being stupid. Don't wink at me like that, stop, get some help. What? Is consuming gouache paint a thing? Is that what you traditional artists do? Do you guys just eat your gouache paint in your free time? <laughs> what? 10 out of 10, this is the day that I found out traditional artists eat their gouache paint. That's why you guys are always tripping. Y'all just go up to a digital artist and be like, your computer does everything for you. Guys, next time somebody says that to you, just be like, man, Sharon, get back to eating your gouache paint. So apparently washable markers are free watercolors. Huh? Even so it doesn't absorb the markers. Huh? Not mad at how this turned out. That's a lot of likes. Have my like. 10 out of 10. If you guys have markers, go try that out. Okay, here's a tip. If you want your brushes to last, don't dip them all the way into the paint. But on the tip that you can spread around. Oh, wow. That is so satisfying. Damn, that was a little much. If you're going to switch brushes or take a break, just put that baby in water. Oh, yes, yes. If you are a traditional artist, one of the worst sins that you could possibly commit is leaving a brush with paint on it just lying around. You're gonna kill that thing. You know, that's the thing about digital art is you've got these brushes, but you can't really touch them. You can't pet the fuzz on their head. You, It's not really, it's not the same. Find that joint, throw the shirt into, and then boom, you got your shirt. Can you Tips I just discovered after using Procreate for three years. Oh, this is from Sparketh. This is the person that knows what they're talking about. I am excited. So you know how sometimes you fill a shape and it's got that little white border on the outside? Well, that's threshold. All you need to do is hold that color and adjust the threshold and that white space will be gone. The next is Whoa. that you can actually make a perfect shape. And I don't mean just holding it. I mean, if you tap it, it'll change huh? a circle into a perfect circle or a square into a perfect square. What? 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 One is that you can actually drag layers into your gallery onto another project in the layer panel. Saves so much Bro. time. What? I'm sure you guys also got something good out of that video. Sparketh, you be killing it you'll be killing it. All right, so that about does it for this episode of looking at TikTok art tips, but I think the quality of these TikToks 
has gone up. It's almost as though these kiddos know that someone on YouTube is gonna review their videos now, huh? This is good. This is the desired effect. We want to protect the art babies and we want them to have access to good information. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video is sponsored by my own Patreon. So if you guys wanna support me, you can check that out. And if you wanna see more art content like this, subscribe to my channel. If you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing, bro? Do you wanna end up like this guy? Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Anyways, that's it from me. Happy holidays. I'll see you guys in the next video.